So in this video, I'm going to present an excerpt from a series of lesson plans that I usually used um, and I developed um, when I introduce Live to new users. I'm going to talk about specifically some of Live's unique features with regards to Max for Live. So let's get started. So in lessons before this one, we would have already taken some time to look at the basics of MIDI and audio in live. We would have also looked at the instruments, the audio effects, MIDI effects. So then if we keep going down the categories in live's browser over here, which is to the left hand side of live's interface, we come to something that reads Max for Live. And then when we click on that, we're presented with three different subcategories, Max Audio Effect, Max Instrument, and Max MIDI Effect. These are basically similar names to the types of native live devices that we already reviewed just preceded by the word Max. So even though it might seem a little bit mysterious at first to a lot of people, uh, Max for Life is actually pretty straightforward. There's a beautiful description of what Max for Life actually is <laughs> on the Ableton website, which you can check it out if, if you want to. And essentially, Max for Life is just a great way for you to extend the functionality of Live if you own Live Suite. The word Max refers to a program that's called Max, and in full, it's called Max MSP Jitter. Max is a really neat program that's been around for decades, and it offers a visual programming environment for computer musicians and creatives to do some really neat audio and visual and multimedia work. So you could even tie Max in with live performances or live visuals or control a hardware synthesizer using Max or even DMX lighting. A lot of people have described Max as audio Lego pieces or puzzle pieces or like a modular synth within your computer if you're into modulars. Keeping this in mind, Max integrates with Live in the form of Max for Live. Because because of this, we're able to do some really cool things that almost help Live Suite evolve, um, like Pokemon, <laughs> almost into Live Suite Plus, if you will. To better illustrate the capabilities of Max for Live, let's take a look at the different Max for Live devices that are available. So to start off, let's see if we can get some sound. So let's take a look at a Max instrument. We'll hop on over to the browser and open the drop down menu of the Max instrument category. And off the top of my head, one of my go to Max instruments is a device called Poly. I'm going to drag it over onto this empty MIDI track that I have over here. Before we move forward, uh, before we start playing any sounds, we notice something interesting about the names of these Max for Live devices, and that's that they all end with .amxd. This is because .amxd is the suffix that indicates an Ableton Max device, hence a MXD. So that's a good visual indicator of whether something you see in the live library is a Max for Live device or not. So let's keep moving forward. We've instantiated Poly, and now I can play Poly on Push. <laughs> and really, this is very similar to how we use Live's non-Max instruments like Analog or Wavetable or Operator. We've just loaded the instrument up, and now on Push, we can even tweak some parameters to change Poly's default. So let's see. We can add in a layer of sub. We can also change the low pass filter frequency as well as the resonance. Awesome. We'll come back to Poly in a few minutes, but right now let's take a look at an example of a pretty straightforward application for using Max for Live devices in our music productions. So similar to how Max instruments are not too different from Live's other instruments, Max audio effects and Max MIDI effects are pretty similar as well. So let's check out a Max audio effect, and I'm going to pull up one that I really love sharing about. This one is called Convolution Reverb. Similar to audio effects in Live, it comes again after the max instrument. From the name of this effect, we can kind of guess that this is some kind of reverb since it's convolution reverb, which it is. And if I play something now, we can obviously hear the reverb on the instrument. There's its tail. But what's unique about convolution reverb, however, is that it digitally, digitally <laughs> excuse me, simulates the reverb from a particular space. And this could be a physical space like a concert hall, or it could be a virtual space, like maybe a simulation of a giant room that doesn't actually exist, uh, but that we're able to mathematically figure out how it would sound if it did exist. And we can see from the convolution reverb device that we do have a multitude of options for spaces that we could choose to have the reverb of. By default, we have a generic reverb type of real spaces. And when I click on the drop down menu right below that, we see this whole slew of options, things like German opera house or stairwell, it's a little bit cut off, um, and seminar room. And maybe I'll choose seminar room in this case. When I play Polly again, 
It's a different kind of reverb that has a shorter tail than the original reverb. But what's even cooler about convolution reverb as a device is that this black section over here that displays a kind of yellowy waveform will allow you to drop samples into it to use as the basis for creating different kinds of reverbs. And the technical name for this is impulse response, or IR, um, which are the letters that we see right here. So let's say maybe I wanted to use some kind of drum sample or percussion sample to use as an impulse, and I'll see if I can search for something that's maybe like chimes. That's pretty cool. Um, and let's see what we can do with that. So I'm going to drag the sample over to the black box, and we see that in the IR box, we have a blue outline that pops up, and that means we're ready to drop our sample in. So if I let go, now the IR box has been populated with this new chimes rough sparkle sample that I chose to pick. And now when I play poly again, we have a very interesting mixed or convolved sound um, that's a version of the instrument which has a really neat timbre to it. And this timbre wouldn't have been created if we hadn't dropped the chime sample in. So we just created our unique sound with these two Max for Live devices. Now let's take a look at one more Max audio effect, which is probably one of my favorites as well. <laughs> and it's called LFO. LFO, which stands for Low Frequency Oscillator, isn't too much of an unfamiliar term because we've seen that in some of Live's native devices, um, we also have the term LFO. So for example, in Wavetable, a uh, Wavetable has just have LFOs. If you wanted, you could use an LFO to change how Wavetable sounded. You could have the brightness of Wavetable, for example, change at regular intervals. So maybe every two beats, it gets brighter and more intense, and then every other two beats, it gets darker, and it keeps repeating this as the LFO keeps on oscillating. The LFO device, in as a Max for Live device, has the ability to function similarly. The great thing about it is that it doesn't necessarily belong to a specific device like Wavetable or another synth. And because of this, it gives us the flexibility to modulate pretty much anything that we want um, and create some really interesting sounds. So let's pull up the LFO device. I'm going to hit back over to my Max for Live category. There it is. There's LFO. Going to drag it on to Poly again. So yes, LFO is another audio effect. And the cool thing about it, like I mentioned, is that we can map it to control a parameter. So for example, I'm going to map the LFO device to, let's say, the low pass filter on Poly. And I can do that by clicking on this map button over here. And now we see that it starts blinking. That means it's ready to be mapped. And then I'm going to head over to Poly and click on its LPF, or low pass filter knob. Once I do that, we see that the knob grays out, and now it's moving at the same rate that our LFO device is running at. But maybe I don't want the changes in the low pass filter frequency to be that intense uh, as it is now. So what I'll do is decrease the depth on the LFO device, maybe to around, let's see, 30 yeah, something percent. And maybe I'll increase the rate also so that we have a more frequent oscillation. It's about maybe three hertz. Cool. Let's see what Polly sounds like. Oh, interesting. Awesome. So we immediately hear how that's given a different character to the sound and created some nice motion. Great. So now let's take a look at the last category of Max for Live devices, the Max MIDI effects. As an example, I like to look at a device called Step Sequencer. So let's scroll down to the Max MIDI effects. Let's find Step Sequencer. Plop it on poly. Similar to MIDI effects, we remember that whenever we put a MIDI effect on a track, it ends up being before the instrument. So similarly, in this case, our max MIDI effect is before our max instrument. So once we insert it, and if I press the space bar to play the project, we pretty much hear um, that this functions like an actual step sequencer. So let's press space bar. <laughs> Cool. So it basically lets you program in patterns and steps. And at the moment, we have one layer of it that's active, which is why we already hear something. And we can see this from this yellow box and this active question mark parameter <laughs> over here. Let's see what happens if I activate the additional layer. So I'll activate all of these four, maybe also decrease the volume of this. And let's press spacebar again. Awesome, and now we hear this really interesting kind of polyphony um, and some really neat interlocking patterns in different ranges. 
Uh, but for now, let's just work with one layer. So I'll deactivate the other layers again, and we'll work with the first layer. Let's take a quick moment to head back over to the LFO device. And the cool thing about this device is that we can map this to multiple parameters at the same time. For Max for Live devices that are a part of Live's core library, we have this option available to us. If we look over here at the LFO device, there's this little icon on the top right-hand corner that looks a little bit like a list. So if we click on that, we're able to see some other options uh, with and other buttons with the word map that will allow us to map this LFO to different parameters as well. Right now, I'm using the LFO to control the low pass filter on poly. Let's see what would happen if we also got it to control, um, let's say, the direction control of maybe our first layer of the step sequencer device. So I'm going to click on map. It's blinking. Great. And I'm going to click on this drop down menu right here. And immediately we actually see that the drop down menu is starting to cycle between different direction controls um, for step sequencer. So let's press play again and see how this sounds. Very interesting. And if you think about it, we just created something that didn't exist before. We did this right off the bat, and this is really just the start of using all of these different audio Lego bits to create new sounds and new instruments. Great. So what's different about Max for Live devices from other devices that are native to Live um, is that we have the option of seeing what's under the hood. I'm going to minimize step sequencer, turn it off, and also convolution reverb and LFO so that we can focus back on poly. You'll notice that on the top right hand corner of the device we have um, something that's next to the hot swap button that looks like a little plug and if we click on this it's actually going to open up what's called the max editor so let's try doing that Ooh, lo and behold a new window has popped up and this is what we call a max patcher window so I'm gonna resize it a little bit through this window we get to see a glimpse of max and some of its basic features for now visually this patcher corresponds to the layout of poly when we used it and live as an instrument. And that's because we're in a particular mode that Max has called presentation mode. A great indicator of this is that we see an icon on the Max Patcher's lower perimeter that looks like a little presentation screen. That's pretty appropriate because I would compare the presentation mode to say if you were making a presentation in Microsoft PowerPoint or a Keynote if you're on a Mac, when you start presenting, your slides fill up the whole screen and that's what your audience sees. Everything looks really neat and organized and well-designed. What the audience does not see is what went on behind the scenes when you are putting the presentation together. So they don't see the outlines of text boxes or the animations that you put in a certain order. But if you wanted to, as the creator of the presentation, you could go into that behind the scenes mode if you wanted to make changes to your slides. So similarly in Max, we can do that too. And that behind the scenes mode is called patching mode. And the way we get to patching mode is by toggling the presentation mode icon. So when we click on this right here, the icon turns white and we see some things have shifted in their position. We also see some words that weren't visible before. So I'm going to resize this window a little and look at all of this. This is essentially what's all going on behind Polly. And this is what went into building the Max for Live device. And we will be going into detail with building Max for Live devices at this moment. That's usually something I save for another lesson down the road. So don't worry. <laughs> but this is just to give you an idea of the possibilities. And at some stage, if we had the desire to, we could even edit some of the connections and building blocks of Poly. So we could move some of these objects and boxes. We could change some of these patch cords that move from one um, thing to the other. And then we would have an instrument that's modified and unique to us. From a sound design and a toolbox perspective, that's a really powerful notion because you could essentially create an army of your own Max for live devices that only you use, which really adds a nice touch of uniqueness to your arsenal of music making tools in live. Cool, so I'm gonna close out of this and hit back to live. And that brings us to the end of our introduction to Max for Live. So thank you so much for your time. Bell trick.